In this portion of the FXDM educational video series, we're going to be taking a look at pips, lots, and orders. So why don't we start with pips. Now pip actually stands for a price improvement point, but you don't need to worry about that because everybody's going to just call it a pip. Now let's start with a quick example here. Let's say that we are trading the euro US dollar exchange rate here and that its current quote is 1.129. Five. That fourth decimal place there, if that goes up by one level or one increment or down by one increment, so to a six or to a four, then that means that it's actually had a change of one pip. Now the exception to this rule where the pip stands for the fourth decimal place is of course going to be anything where you have the yen over on this side of the exchange rate. So if the yen is on this side of the exchange rate, then it's going to be carried out, or, or pip will be the second decimal place. Now however, we also have most currency pairs these days are actually quoted all the way out to the fifth decimal place. So in this case, we'll take that out to a seven. So the fifth decimal place in this case is a point or a change in the fifth decimal place would be a change of one point within the exchange rate. And of course, with a currency pair where the yen is over here on the exchange rate, well, then that's going to be carried out to the third decimal point. So let's imagine that the euro to the US dollar, that the exchange rate actually changes a little bit. We'll say that it drops in value and is currently 1.12934. So this is a change uh, both in pips as well as a fractional amount of pips or points. So in this case, it's actually fallen by 2.3 pips in total. Now, how much is that worth? Well, before we get into that, we really need to understand lot sizes. So let's discuss that really quick. This isn't very complicated at all. So a lot is equal to 100,000 units of the base currency. So in this case, we have the euro over here. That is your base currency in this exchange rate. Over here, this is the quote currency in the exchange rate. In fact, that's why this particular exchange rate, when it's listed like this, it's going to be quoted in dollars. So if we were trading a lot of the euro USD, then that means you're trading 100,000 units of the euro or 100,000 euro. Now, there are, of course, also many lots, and those represent 10,000 units of the base currency. And then there are also micro lots which represent 1,000 units of the base currency. Now, we're going to be sticking with regular lots in our video series to keep the math really easy, but as you can see, this is merely going to be a matter of pushing the decimal place one direction or the other if you want to be able to modify some of the calculations that we'll do. So now that we understand some of this basic material, we can start to dig into, well, how much is a PIP actually worth and how do we tell how much it's worth in a, with a given exchange rate? So let's learn how to calculate the value of a pip now that we understand what a pip is and what lot sizes are. And the answer is actually really simple. There's a really quick formula that you can use to determine the value of a pip in any given situation. Now, all we have to do, so we'll take an example here with the euro to the US dollar. Now, it's gonna be important, we're gonna come back to this in a second. It's gonna be important to remember that the euro is in the base and the dollar is actually in the quote. So all we have to do is here's the formula that we're going to use. We're going to put a pip in the numerator of a division problem. So 0.0001, because remember that the pip in the euro US dollar is all the way out in the fourth decimal place. And then in the denominator, we're going to put the current exchange rate. And remember from our last example, that was 1.12957. Now, once we can figure out what the quotient is for this division problem, all we have to do is then times this by our lot size, so 100,000 units of the base currency here of the euro. And if you do that, you'll actually come up with a solution here of 8.85, and we'll put a little dot, 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 because the decimal goes on for a little bit after that. Now, what that is telling you is how much a one pip move in the exchange rate is worth in base currency terms. So what if your account currency is the dollar? So let's say that your account currency is the dollar and you're trying to figure out, well, how much is a one pip move worth to me in my own account currency? Well, that's easy. All we have to do is take this number here, 8.85 and so forth, and we times it by the exchange rate, which is 1.12957. 
And if we do that, that's going to come out to be an even $10. In fact, if your account currency were a dollar and any particular currency pair that you're trading where the dollar is in the quote, well, then a one pip move in that currency is going to be worth $10. So it's really easy to figure out. Now, what happens? So assume that your account currency is a dollar. Well, what happens if the dollar is not in the quote? What if it's over here on the base side like it is here with the dollar to the end? How do we figure that out? The exact same way. But it's going to be just very slightly different. But not if you remember your rules, it's going to be really easy. So here we got our formula. And remember, with a currency pair where the yen is involved, then a pip is the second decimal place and a point is the third decimal place. So we're going to put in the numerator here 0.01. We're going to divide that by whatever the current exchange rate is. So let's assume that that was 1, 22, uh, 8, 3, 9. So the 3 is in the pip place, the 9 is in the point place. And we times that by 100,000 units of the base. And that's actually going to give us a, a result that we don't have to then convert any further. So the result from this is going to be $8.14. So in this case, where the dollar is over here on the base side, then we don't have to further convert this, assuming that your account was in dollar denominated terms. So let's look at an example that's a little bit more realistic or that happened over time. Imagine that on August 24th, 2015, you see an opportunity to open a short position on the Euro US dollar. At the time, as you can see here, it was priced at 1.1375. Let's just assume a zero on the end there at the fifth decimal place. Then later in November, so November 10th, 2015, you decide that you're going to close that position and harvest your gains. And the current quote at that time that you'd be able to buy it back was 1.07508. So we are going to take this out to the fifth decimal place here. So if we subtract these two from each other, then basically that's a difference of 624.2 pips. Now, figuring out what your gains from that is really easy. We know in this case, because the dollar is the quote currency, and if your account currency was a dollar, then each one of those pips is worth $10 to you. So if we take $10 times 624.2 pips, then we find a gain of $6,242. So let's think about our past example and how a trader would actually go about executing that order. So as I said, let's imagine that the current market price is 1.13750. Now, instant execution is one of the approaches here, which is that if they see that that price is available, they can put in an order for instant execution. However, if the price that's available or quoted changes, then they're going to get a requote. So they can decide whether or not they take that requote. Let's say that the requote was at 1.13745, so a little bit underneath where they had originally planned. Well, they can then decide whether or not they're going to actually take that order. Now, at the same time, they can also set a couple of orders to provide some protection for their position. So with the instant execution, they can set a stop loss order, which in this case, if they were shorting the euro dollar exchange rate, then they're putting a stop loss that will exit their position up above the market, which in, in fact, in this example, the market did rise a little bit. So this protects them just in case the euro dollar in this, for instance, had actually continued to rise. Well, they can also set another order at the same time called a take profit. So the take profit will allow them to take their profits off the table if the exchange rate gets to where they had planned, uh, even whether they're there in front of their FXDM MT4 platform or not. So they're able to, in this case, put a take profit order underneath the market. Now there's another way to approach this too, and we can use a pending order. Now a pending order is not very complicated, but it has a couple of choices that you have to make depending on where you want to actually get into the position in the first place. So a pending order basically falls into two categories. There's a buy or there's a sell order. Now let's imagine that again that you're planning to, like this trader was, that you're planning to short the euro dollar exchange rate. So you could put a pending order that is a sell pending order. Now, 
if you assume that you want to sell as the market begins to fall a little bit, maybe it's starting to gather a little bit of bearish momentum, or at least that's what you're anticipating. So you wanted to use a sell order that actually gets you into the position as the market starts moving down. Well, then you would need to use a sell stop order. Now, if you instead, let's say you anticipated that the euro dollar might rise a little bit, maybe it's gonna to get to a resistance level, and you wanna sell at that point, but maybe you won't be there in front of your trading platform at the time, so you could use a sell limit order. So in this case, you have the ability to basically decide, I want my sell order to trigger as the market starts falling. So in other words, the, the price at that time that I want that order to execute is, is underneath the price that's available right now or I want to short as the market begins to uh, rise, maybe hits a, a resistance level or something like that, and so I'm gonna use a limit order to do that. Now, there is the inverse of this, of course. Let's imagine that instead of being bearish on the euro dollar, you were bullish and you wanna be able to take advantage of that with a buy order. Well, this works the same way. So if a trader had wanted to buy as the market was rising and beginning to gather a little bit of bullish momentum, then they'd wanna use a buy stop because they have the ability right now to buy at a cheaper price, but they don't wanna do that. They wanna buy as the market begins to move in their favor, so they would use a buy stop. Well, what if they think that there is the possibility that the market or the Euro dollar exchange rate may actually drop a little bit, maybe it gets to a support level or something like that, and they wanna be able to execute their buy order at that point, they would use a buy limit. So that's an order that's gonna execute as the market price comes down or the available price comes down to wherever they anticipate uh, that they want to be able to actually achieve that execution. So there's a lot of alternatives here, but really it's just two variations of the same thing. And then finally, they can use market execution. Now market execution is, uh, in some respects, so you can kind of think about it as similar to inst instant execution, except that market execution, that will give you the market price. Now that may be exactly the price that you planned, or it could be even a little better or a little bit worse, but when that order is sent through to the market, that's the price that you're gonna get, is what's available at the market immediately. And then later you can go in to put in a pending orders that will act as a stop loss or a take profit level.